There's no gamer among us who doesn't have not so fond memories of getting stuck for hours, if not days, weeks or even months on a particular level of a video game they were otherwise enjoying the hell out of. Whether a result of an unexpected difficulty spike or developers who didn't sufficiently quality check their titles before shipping, these games all left young players thoroughly confused. These infamous levels were all too much for our still developing noggins and typically required young gamers to either seek out a strategy guide or ask an older sibling to get the job done. I'm Kirsten from What Culture and these are the 10 video game levels that confused everyone as kids. Number 10. Sector 6 Slums Final Fantasy 7 Final Fantasy VII was the video game that introduced many Western youngsters to the RPG genre, a masterpiece that endures to this very day despite its occasional frustrations. Case in point, we have the Sector VI slums, in particular the infuriatingly labyrinthine maze of detritus which players must navigate in order to reach Sector VII. Though on paper the correct route actually seems relatively simple, navigation is made exponentially more difficult by the game's camera perspective, which makes it tough to discern which environmental objects can be climbed. Especially irritating is the moment when players finally realise that the seemingly unscalable brown pipe can be climbed from the ground, probably a discovery made accidentally due to the pipe's point of origin being obscured from view. Honestly, this surely stumped a lot of adults too for a while, but to kids less familiar with angles and perspective, it was positively brain-breaking. Number 9. Hakuna Matata – The Lion King 1994's The Lion King is an infamously difficult platformer, and the game's ludicrously unfair level of challenge was a result of Disney insisting that developers Westwood Studio make it difficult enough so kids couldn't complete it during Blockbuster's three-day rental period. Hell, in a recent interview, Westwood's co-founder even apologised to players for it. You can pick pretty much any of the game's levels and point out how infuriating they were for kids to play, though there's one segment of one level in particular that really sticks in the craw, even over 25 years later. The sixth level, Hakuna Matata, features an absurdly lengthy platforming sequence where the player has to jump up a waterfall using a series of logs which are falling down the waterfall. It sounds easy enough, except the spawn pattern of the logs is laughably unforgiving, and the sequence requires players to execute well-timed leaps for a solid 90 seconds in order to make it to the end. For many kids, the challenge was simply too much, and that was as far as they ever got. Number 8. Carnival Night Zone Act 2 Sonic the Hedgehog 3 to those reared on the checkpoint-heavy games of today, the earlier Sonic games must seem positively barbaric, with their no-holds-barred approach to game overs requiring players to start the entire game all over again once they run out of lives. But the most baffling level in any Sonic game is surely Carnival Night Zones Act 2 in Sonic the Hedgehog 3, where players are faced with a red barrel obstacle and no clear indication of how to pass it. Better known these days as the Barrel of Doom, it's a puzzle which left thousands if not millions of players clueless and was a major point of discussion in gaming magazines of the era. Worse still, the solution is simple enough that players had to restrain themselves from breaking their controller over their knee once they found out. When stood on the barrel, players can move it up and down by pressing the corresponding D-pad button, creating enough separation that Sonic and Tails can squeeze through the gap. Given that there is no visual indication that players could do this, most only found out through accidental experimentation or by reading the answer in a gaming mag. As such, this one really isn't a case of kids being kids, the devs screwed up, and Sonic 3's lead programmer Yuji Naka even eventually apologised for creating such a headache. Number 7. Palace Midas – Tomb Raider Compared to the Tomb Raider reboot trilogy, the original PlayStation era of the action-adventure series was tough as nails, with its sparser approach to save points and generally less accommodating array of puzzles. Fans have long debated which single Tomb Raider level is the toughest, though the most confusing, at least for young'uns, is surely Palace Midas from the original 1996 game. This obtuse puzzle level requires players to collect three lead bars, each contained within a brutal death trap and take them to the statue of Midas, which will convert them into gold and allow Lara to progress. While a modern Tomb Raider would more or less spell this out to you, the original game largely left players to their own devices to work it out, and so many young players wasted many weekends trying to make sense of what the game was actually asking them to do. Number 6. The Water Temple – The Legend of Zelda – Ocarina of Time 
The Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time is fondly remembered by an entire generation of N64 owners as one of their formative gaming experiences. That is, until they reached that damn water temple. One of the most infamously challenging levels in any AAA video game, the temple comprises five floors which the player can navigate by changing the water level. The slapdash, maze-like layout of the water temple is made to willfully befuddle, while using iron boots to sink and slowly trudge through the water feels like designer Eiji Aonuma flat out trolling players. Even if played with a pen and paper at the ready, the level is headache inducingly labyrinthine, and it's incredibly easy to end up in a loop of revisiting the same rooms over and over again while thinking you've stumbled across a new area. And though strategy guides help lessen the frustration, it was still an absolute slog making it to the end. Aonuma eventually apologised for the level, and significantly nerfed its difficulty for the 2011 3DS remake. Number 5. The Library – Halo the Halo franchise isn't exactly renowned for giving players much pause for thought, though there's one single level across the entire franchise which is near universally loathed for just how much of a confusing mess it is. The library throws players into a relentless barrage of hallways and corridors where they're forced to take on a seemingly never-ending horde of the alien contingent known as the Flood, all while trying to work out where to go next. It's certainly a bit less demoralising when played co-op with a pal, but on your own it's incredibly easy to lose your bearings, not to mention running out of ammo and getting totally overwhelmed. Though in theory the library should be an insanely intense gauntlet, the copy-paste level design and sheer soulless repetition quickly makes it to the worst thing any video game level can be – confusing and boring. Number 4 – World 3 – First Fortress – Super Mario Bros. 3 for many young players, World 3 First Fortress was pretty much where their time playing Super Mario Bros. 3 came to an end. The level presents players with a ludicrous number of doors and tasks them with figuring out which one actually offers the path forward. Cue every kid randomly choosing doors for hours on end and getting nowhere, made all the more frustrating by the harsh time limit imposed upon players. The solution is extremely easy to execute once you know it. The sixth door on your right followed by the door directly above you, but given the sheer number of doors in the hallway, it represented an infuriating brick wall to many. Boo! Number 3. The Tutorial – Driver Driver is one of the PlayStation's most iconic games, despite many players being unable to even make it past the laughably challenging tutorial. Driver opens with a driving test sequence in which the player must drive around a garage pulling off a literal shopping list of nine manoeuvres, apparently to prove that they're worthy of playing with the game proper. Unfortunately, a lot of the requirements are vaguely termed at best, because how is a kid with no practical knowledge of actual driving supposed to know what brake test means, or worse, still slalom. All young players wanted to do was drive around the city, yet Driver bafflingly threw up a bizarre challenge right out of the gate, and it's honestly the toughest the game gets until its very final level. Number 2. Landing the plane on any level – Top Gun Konami's 1987 Top Gun game is notoriously challenging, not so much for its dogfighting gameplay, but the simple fact that landing your plane back onto the aircraft carrier at the end of a mission is spectacularly frustrating. Players have to control their altitude and speed to a ridiculously narrow margin of error in order to land successfully, and is such a strict requirement that many kids likely assumed there was something else they were supposed to do. It's been a running joke for over three decades that landing an actual plane is less of a headache than it is in the game, because even if you manage to pull it off once, it's most likely a total fluke that you'll rarely, if ever, be able to replicate it. Number 1. Wrong Side of the Tracks – Grand Theft Auto – San Andreas No discussion about the toughest mission in the Grand Theft Auto franchise can be complete without bringing up San Andreas' Wrong Side of the Tracks. Though the mission isn't terribly difficult from a mechanical perspective, it's so prone to player failure that they're likely to assume they're missing some small detail which allows them to successfully complete it. And so, we all remember the words that still keep us awake at night – all you had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! The mission requires players to chase a train while riding a motorcycle and fending off shooters, but between the janky bike physics, countless obstacles thrown your way, and frustrating camera angles, it's incredibly easy to spend hours and hours failing the damn thing. There are message boards full of players trying to figure out the knack for keeping pace with the train, when really it's just a poorly designed mission with a razor-thin margin of error.